Hi guys and welcome back. Um, it's been a while since I've done a voiceover video so I figured we'd just go ahead and do one on this piece today and we'll go ahead and jump right in. The topics I'm going to be talking about are going to be about line width and variations and a little bit about my coloring process and since I did a coloring process video earlier uh, this month it's not going to be as detailed but anyway we'll get right into it. Um, so right now I'm doing the lines and on top of the actual line work that was in the background when we first started, but um, it's it was okay to begin with. Like the lines, there was nothing wrong with it. I could have called the line work completely finished and just gone ahead and started coloring. But I like having a little bit more bold lines and more detail in my lines than uh, I guess could have been done. But anyway, um, sorry, it's been a while since I've done it voiceover, so I'm trying to figure out how to talk again. And uh, yeah, so kind of varying my line width and placement of it is a little bit of a hard topic to discuss because it's really about personal preference and what you guys are, you know, what you know about lines, I guess. Um, but I'll try and explain it a little bit. So you want your lines and your point of interest to be um, directed where you, wherever you want the eye of your viewer to go. So like I'll have the, the base of the scarf, or I mean the lines on the scarf, you'll see like the lines are a bit more thick there and around his hair and stuff. And that's just because I want the eye to be drawn into that area more than normal. And I'll also do like the, uh, the scarf behind him. I'll have the lines a little bit bolder and then as it gets away from him I'll have them kind of thin out into barely just like a hair. But um, yeah, that's kind of a little bit about the lines. If you guys need me to go into more detail about it, I can do that later. But since I'm getting into the coloring, I'll go ahead and talk about the coloring process. After I get all my lines filled in, I'll just do a whole base color for the character. It doesn't have to be their skin tone or anything, it's just a color that I want to pick out that I can see and make sure everything is where it needs to be, everything's blocked in. And on top of that layer, I'll just kind of select that layer and make sure all my colors stay where they need to be. And I'll go in with the uh, the scarf and the shirt and pants and all that good stuff. And I usually do it in the order of um, the clothes that are underneath and then the clothes that are on top are going to be on the top layers because I don't want his pants to be, you know, blending in with the scarf or anything because that's just going to make it a little more difficult for everybody. But um, after I get all the colors blocked in, I will go in with a multiply layer on top of all the colors. And it used to be back when I first started drawing and actually kind of up until recently, I would um, just add the highlights and all the shadows onto the actual layer itself instead of like on top of all the layers if that makes sense. Um, so that would just take a really really long time like more time than was necessary like to even do like one kind of shadow and I realized recently like that takes a really long time and I'm gonna do it differently so you know watching other people's tutorials and um, even without voiceovers, like you're kind of like, oh, that's how they do it. I could do that in mine. So that's why I'm kind of explaining it right now. Um, but yeah, it would just take a really long time to do all the shadows and all the highlights and just one particular clothing piece or just the hair or, you know, what have you. But anyway, um, I'll start talking about more of the coloring process since we're going to get into that soon. Um, after I get the multiply layers out of the way, or just one layer, um, I will go in with like usually a soft light or a screen layer and just kind of add more colors and more highlights to wherever I want the um, the highlights or the uh, the key light or backlight to be. And in this one I do more of a backlight than I would a key light. And the key light is just basically where, where the most direct um, light source would be hitting. So like if you have it like a, in the sunlight, that's usually like a really bright key light for a person. And um, this one's more backlights and soft colors. Um, since I didn't really know where I wanted to place the lighting because this character is kind of shady and he's kind of unknown to me. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of be a little bit more about those colors that are bouncing off of him. And um, this drawing is actually a, a gift for a friend. Um, he couldn't commission me because he's broke and I couldn't buy him a birthday present because I'm broke. So I just went ahead and made him a, a little piece of art that he's uh, going to take to Anime Week in Atlanta. He's going to have this um, drawing printed out and signed by the voice actor for this character that I'm drawing. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, um, I don't really know a lot about the character other than it's like from a Nintendo Switch game. 
it's called like Octopath or something, I think. Um, and I find it really hard for me to draw characters that I don't know, which is why I've never really opened up for commissions before, because I, I have to get emotionally invested in the character if I want to draw them, which is why my, um, my usual videos and drawings are usually about my characters um, for my comic or just characters that I want to draw. Um, it's just really hard for me to get emotionally invested in other characters that I just don't know, so I don't want to draw them, you know? But, you know, once again, it's for a birthday present, so, you know, you kind of have to do what you gotta do. Um, but yeah, I don't know if anyone else has that kind of same issue, but that's just something I deal with. Um, I would like to open up for commissions, but, because, you know, I like money, but I also don't like people asking me for things, I guess. And it sounds terrible and it sounds really mean, but that's just the way I am. Um, I'll get more into that some other day, but uh, anyway, we're going to start focusing more on the colors and stuff. Um, after I have the highlights and the shadows placed, I like having a texture because this character is a little bit of a, uh, a kind of dirty looking boy. So I add a little bit of texture to this clothes. Um, Clip Studio Paint has a nice little free downloadable texture thing already on it. But I will go in with like a textured brush and like a, I think it's like an ink brush. And I'll just kind of go on top of um, the colors with that like right now. And uh, I just like the way the textures work with characters and clothes. Um, but after that, um, I start doing more of the, um, I've already got the soft light layer down, but I'll go in with like a color dodge right about now. And um, I just start off with a white color just to get the, um, the placement of the light source that I want to have. And I change the color to a red on that side just because I want him to bounce off in the background a little bit. And the character I wanted him, I, at first I wanted him to look a little bit more blue, but he was just looking, looking a little washed out. So I decided to make him a more, um, a warmer tone. And then later on I changed the background to a blue tone um, just to give it a little contrast and complementary colors and all that other kind of art talk. But um, I like adding backlights as well, so you see the backlight on him. Um, it's like the bluish purple color that's bouncing off from him, just kind of bringing him back from the uh, the background. So I think that's fun to do. And then I start adding highlights with the add glow layer, just like little small details. And my favorite part, which is really weird, but was adding the uh, the frills and the fringe onto his uh, tunic and onto his um, waist thing that he's wearing. Um, but yeah, like that was just like the small little details that I just really love adding and it gives it a little bit more movement, gives it a little bit more of a eye-catching quality, I guess. But um, I also do that to his hair as well because his hair is looking a little bit stiff and kind of, you know, sprayed into place. So I kind of just go with a, a small line brush and just add more of a movement and more texture to it. And that was uh, another favorite part of mine. But yeah, that's kind of a little bit of insight in how I do my colors and stuff, so I hope it helped you guys out. But um, once again, I will probably start drawing more or posting more Evergrey um, speed paints very soon because I've been trying to work on that a lot. And every now and then I'll remember to record the process. Sometimes I forget and I'm like, dang it, I should have recorded that. That would have been cool to talk about. But anyway, um, the chapter or the new episode, I guess, will still be a little bit put off because um, I just got a new job recently and I'm starting on October 1st and my social life that I don't, I don't have really and my uh, non-work life is going to be very very small very soon so I'm trying to get all the art that I possibly can get done do it right now because life is going to be crazy pretty soon but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video um, if you have a topic that you want me to discuss or kind of drawing theme that you want to talk about, then let me know and I will do my best to do that. I hope you all have a good one. Bye!